schedule. The first days of August come, and it's pouring rain outside. Nights like this usually bring us deep sleep, but that was after this story time. Back to Tutu Chan and a swimming pool story from the previous chapter, I think the most beautiful thing is that the children had fun and enjoyed each other under different physical and psychological states without discrimination. That's right, my little angel, the discrimination. Discrimination stems from differences in the way we badly behave with those differences. For example, one day, my little angel accidentally put on the wrong size shirt on the street. That shirt is the difference, but the not bad difference. But if many people laughed at you because you don't appear the same as them on the street, my little love, you are discriminated against. Such distinctions bring unpleasantness to a sufferer. Because of that, my dear angel, let you avoid doing such things to others when you could feel unhappy if it happened to you. Surprise is normal. Toto chan met Yasuaki chan on the first day of school, was also surprised because his posture was different from everyone Toto chan has ever known. But that surprise ended quickly. Being quickly seen as no other kept Yasuaki chan from being upset. My little angel, let you also be kind to avoid those who have differences from falling into unhappy emotions because of being discriminated against. The following two chapters will add new colors to the summer in Toto Chan experience at Tomoe School, not only with the headmaster but with Yasuaki Chan too. Not waiting any longer, let us begin. Summer vacation begins and the great adventure. We are going to camping tomorrow. Please come to the school in the evening with blankets and pajamas. Said the note from the headmaster that Toto Chan took home and showed to mother. Summer vacation began the following day. What does camping mean? asked Toto Chan. Mother was wondering too, but she replied. Doesn't it mean you are probably going to put up tents somewhere outdoors and sleep in them? Sleeping in a tent, you can see the moon and the stars. I wonder where they are set up the tents. There's no mention of fairs, so it's probably somewhere near the school. That night, after Toto Chan had gone to bed, she couldn't sleep for ages. The idea of going camping sounded rather scary. A tremendous adventure, and her heart beat very fast. The following morning, she started packing as soon as she woke up. But that evening, as her blanket was placed on top of the knapsack that held her pajamas, and she said goodbye and sat up, she felt petite and frightened. When the children were gathered at the school, the headmaster said, Now then, all of you, come to the assembly hall. When they arrived, he went onto the small stage carrying something stiff and scotchy. It was a green tent. I'm going to show you how to pitch a tent, he said, spitting it out. Please observe. All along, puffing and blowing, he pulled ropes this way and set up poles that way. And in the blink of an eye, there stood a beautiful tent. Come on then, he said. Now you are going to set up tents all over the assembly hall and start camping. Mother imagined, as anyone would have, that they could put up the tents outdoors, but the headmaster had other ideas. In the assembly hall, the children would be alright even if it rained at night or got a bit cold. With the delighted shouts of, We are camping, we are camping! The children were divided into groups and, with the help of the teachers, they finally managed to set up the required number of tents. One tent could sleep about three children. Toto Chan quickly got into her pajamas and soon children were happily crawling in and out of this tent and that one. There was much visiting to and fro. 
when everyone was in pajamas, the headmaster sat down in the middle, where they could all see him and talk to them about his travels abroad. Some of the children lay in their tents with just their heads showing. Others sat up properly, and some lay on older children's laps. All listening to his tales of foreign countries they had never been to, never seen, and sometimes never even heard of. The headmaster's stories were fascinating, and at times they felt as if the children described in lands across the sea were their friends. And so it happened that this simple event, sleeping in tents in the assembly hall, became one of the children's happy and valuable experience they could never forget. The headmaster suddenly knew how to make children happy. When the headmaster finished speaking and the light in assembly hall had been turned out, all the children went into their tents. Laughter could be heard from some, whispers from others, while the sound of the scuffle came from a tent at the far end. Gradually, silence fell. It was camping without any moon or stars, but the children enjoyed it thoroughly. To them, that little assembly hall seemed like a real camping ground, and memory wrapped that night in moonbeams and starling forever. Two days after they camped in the assembly hall, the day of Toto Chan's great adventure finally came to pass. It was the day of her appointment with Yasuki Chan, and it was a secret that neither mother nor daddy nor Yasuki Chan's parents knew. She had invited Yasuki Chan to her tree. The students at Tumue each has a tree on the school grounds they consider their own climbing tree. Toto Chan's tree was at the edge of the land near the fence beside the land leading to Kuhan Basu. It was a large tree and slippery to climb, but if you climbed it skillfully, you could reach a fork about 2 meters from the ground. The division was as comfortable as a hammock. Toto Chan used to go there during races and after school and sit and look up into the distance, up at the sky or watch the people going by below. The children consider the tree as their own private property. So if you wanted to climb someone else's tree, you had to ask their permission very politely, saying, Excuse me, may I come in? But Yasuo Kichan had had polio. He had never climbed a tree and couldn't climb one as his own. That's why Toto Chan decided to invite him to her tree. They kept it a secret because they thought people were sure to make a fuss if they knew. When she left home, Toto Chan told her mother she was going to visit Yasuaki Chan at his home in Dananjofu. She was telling a lie, so she tried not to look at mother but kept her eyes in her shoelaces. But Rocky followed her to the station. So when they parted company, she told him the truth. I'm going to let Yasuaki Chan climb my tree, she said. When Tutu Chan reached the school, her train passed flapping around her neck. She found Yasuaki Chan waiting by the flower beds on the deserted grounds, now that it was summer vacation. He was only a year older than Tutu Chan, but he always sounded much older when he spoke. When Yasuaki Chan saw Tutu Chan, he hurried toward her dragging his leg and holding his arms out in front to steady himself. Toto Chan was thrilled to think they were going to do something secret and see Gigo. Yasuaki Chan Gigo too. Toto Chan led Yasuaki Chan to her tree, and then, just as she had thought it out the night before, she ran to the janitor's shed and got a ladder which she dragged over the tree and leaned against the trunk so that it reached the fork. She climbed it up quickly and holding the top of the ladder, calling down, All right, try climbing up. Yes, Yagi Chan's arms and legs were so weak, it seemed he could not even get on the first rung without help. So Tutu Chan hurried down the ladder backwards and tried pushing Yes, Yagi Chan up from behind. 
but Toto Chan was so small and slender that it was all she could do to hold on Yasuaki chan, let alone keep the ladder steady. Yasuaki chan took his foot off the bottom rung and stood beside the ladder, his head bowed. Toto chan realized for the first time that it could be more complicated than she had thought. What should I do? She wanted so badly to have Yasuaki chan climb her tree, and he had been looking forward to it so much. She went around and faced him. He looked so disconsolate that she puffed out her cheeks and made a funny face to cheer him up. Hey, wait, I've got an idea. She ran back to the janitor's shed and pulled out one thing after another to see if she could find something that could help. She finally discovered a step later. It could remain steady so she wouldn't have to hold it. She dragged the step ladder over, amazed at her own strength, and was delighted to find it almost reached the fork. Now, don't be afraid, she said persistently. This isn't going to wobble. Yasuaki chan looked nervously at the step ladder. Then he looked at Toto chan, drenched in perspiration. Yasuaki chan was sweat profusely too. He looked at the tree. Then, with determination, he placed a foot on the first rung. Neither was conscious to the time it took Yasuaki chan to reach the top of the step ladder. The hot summer sun beat down. But they had no thoughts for any except getting Yasuaki chan to the top of the step ladder. Toto chan got underneath him and lifted his feet while steadying his bottom with her head. Yasuaki chan struggled with all his might and finally reached the top. Hooray! But from there, it was hopeless. Toto chan jumped onto the fork. But no matter how she tried, she couldn't get Yasuaki chan onto the tree from a step ladder. Clutching the step ladder, Yasuaki chan looked at Toto chan. She suddenly felt like crying. She had wanted so badly to invite Yasuaki chan to her tree and show him all sorts of things. But she didn't cry. She was afraid that if she did, Yasuaki chan might start crying too. Instead, she took hold of his hand, its fingers all stuck together because of the polio. It was bigger than hers, and his fingers were longer. She held his hands for a long time. Then she said, Lie down, and I'll try and pull you over. If any grown-up has seen her standing on a fork of the street, starting to pull Yasuaki chan lying on his stomach on a step ladder onto the tree, they would have screamed. It must have looked terribly precarious. But Yasuaki chan trusted Toto chan completely, and Toto chan was risking her life for him. With her tiny hands clutching his, she pulled with all her might. Occasionally, a large cloud could mercifully protect them from the blistering sun. And at long last, the two stood face to face on a tree. Pressing her damned hair back, Toto Chan bowed politely and said, Welcome to my tree! Yasuaki leaned against the trunk, smiling rather bashfully. He said, May I come in? Yasuaki chan was able to see visitors he had never glimpsed before. So, this is what it's like to climb a tree, he said happily. They stayed on the tree for a long time and discussed all sorts of things. My sister in America says they've got something they call television, said Yasuaki chan enthusiastically. She says that when it comes to Japan, we're able to sit at home and watch sumo wrestling. She says it's like a box. Toto chan didn't understand yet how much it could mean to Yasuaki chan, who couldn't go very far afield to be able to watch all sorts of things at home. She wondered how sumo wrestlers could get inside a box in your house. Sumo wrestlers were so big, but it was fascinating all the same. In those days, nobody knew about television. Yasuaki chan was the first to tell Toto chan about it. The cicadas were singing, and the two children were so happy. 
and for Yasuo Akichan, it was the first and last time he ever climbed a tree. Tonight's story time is over. I wish my angel good dreams so much that when you wake up the next morning, you will still be smiling. I kiss you on your forehead. See you again next time.